Hello guys and welcome to some Minecraft science. Today I'm going to walk through you how the spawning algorithm works for mobs. We're not going to look at why they pick a certain block and how often they pick a block but just know that they will pick a block and they'll look at the conditions of that block if they are met it will then attempt to spawn a mob. So we're also going to look at the concept of air blocks. This is very important for any mob trap you have and spawning in general and you can use these tricks to do a lot of really cool stuff which a lot of, not a lot of people uh, actually know about so first of all, we'll look at the actual code and we'll look at the algorithm so first of all it checks the world and it says all oh, these blocks grass so this one here you have to say yep that is a grass block if it says yes it will carry on then it checks the light level if it's nine or higher it will then spawn a peaceful mob so either chicken, sheep mushroom, cow, wolf or pig depending on what biome you're in obviously and then the next argument after it's tried that it will then try and spawn a cat and there is a two-thirds chance of actually spawning one and then if they succeed in that test it will carry on then it will check the block so not only have you got to pass this test first of all it's then got to pass the block check so either grass or leaves if that's satisfied it will carry on and look at the level now at the moment we're on level 4 as we're a normal super flat world so that would fail that's why you don't get many cats spawning in your world and move on in the overworld obviously most people know light level 7 or less and a hostile mob will spawn so endermen zombies spiders and and uh, skellies then in the nether there are some cool things so Blaze will spawn in light level 11 or less. So you can stop Blaze from spawning just by lighting things up, which is quite a cool thing not many people understand. Then Ghasts only have a 5% chance of spawning, which is why Ghast farms are very hard to do, and we'll go on to why they're hard in a bit. And then Zombie Pigment are not affected by light level at all, so there you are. And also Magma Creams are not affected by light level either. And then in the overworld again, silverfish from a spawner will not spawn if the light is more than 11. So it's be less than 11 to spawn. But in the algorithm it says light level less than 11 or on stone bricks. So that may mean that they will spawn more than light level 11 if they are going to be on stone bricks. Might have to test that in my single player. And it also has an additional argument of no players within 5 blocks, which I'm not sure I've actually noticed myself but there you go and then we look on slimes now slimes are really important for what we're going to be doing today so first of all a lot of you know what a slime chunk is there is a 1 in 10 chance of one of these chunks a 16 by 16 by max height to floor has a chance of being a slime chunk now in that slime chunk only y equals four, or less than 40 actually will spawn a slime and when that runs its chance, there's only 1 in 10 chance of a slime spawning in a slime chunk, which is 1 in 10 chance anyway. So when it's picking random blocks around to check, there is a 1 in 10 chance it'll actually land on a slime chunk itself, and then a further 1 in 10 chance of it actually spawning a slime within that chunk. That's why slime farms are generally quite unproductive, or not as productive as other types of farms. And then there's an additional argument of having a swamp biome, the layers at between 51 and 69 will spawn them if the light level is less than 7, so same light level as a normal hostile mob. And then we've got an additional couple, so squids, they can't collide with entities and they're between 46 and 62. And then there is giants, these are actually in the code but they have a light level requirement of less than 7 and more than or equal to 8. So that's an impossibility check. And that's basically saying that in vanilla, you'll never ever have a giant spawn. But they would be really cool if they actually implemented them. I would love to see giants in the game. That's where where the giant comes from, the FTB, for the giant zombies. And then we've got a couple more things here. So that these are general check for everything. So addition to all those checks we've done, all except slimes and squids, they can't collide with any blocks or entities and they cannot spawn in water or lava. Now there are a couple of mobs that we don't cover, things like wither skellies. Now wither skellies do the same principles as normal skeletons 
And that about covers the mobs. So this bit at the end must not collide with any of the blocks or other entities. Now this is where things get really interesting. So let's jump onto another test world and look at air blocks. Okay, so here we are showing the principles of the last point in that list of different conditions. And that's that no entities can be in the block of which it's trying to spawn into. Now, this is a world where the whole surface has got torches in. Now, torches are an entity, but they're also giving off light. So, you wouldn't expect any hostile mobs to spawn, but we're on level 5. So, you would expect slimes to spawn, as there is 1 in 10 chance of the chunk being a slime, and then also 1 in 10 chance of a slime spawning in that. Now, all of you guys, we are on hard, and you all know that slimes spawn in super flat worlds very very often so at the moment you don't see any and you won't see any because the spawning algorithm hits that last point on the list and says there's an entity in this point I can't spawn I'll try again somewhere else and it keeps trying that keeps trying that and it doesn't actually work now the reason why sometimes they do spawn is because if there is a block around to my knowledge this is how it works this would be what is called an air block and I'm calling it an air block because there is nothing inside of it apart from air so it's a legal spawning block if you want to be more um, official with it so this is a spawnable block in every sense of the word and also if there was say oh, let's get that if you had this this block would still be a legal spawning block because there's nothing in it apart from air so the algorithm would pass all the checks and then try and spawn a mob. Now when they spawn the mob, to my knowledge, they spawn it in a radius of that block, not just on the block itself. So if that one passes it, then it will look at a block around and it will say, spawn it there. So that's why you can get mob spawning on torches. That is how I understand it anyway. So for here, there won't be any spawns at all. But if I cut out a chunk of it, then you would get a couple mobs spawning but most of the time the algorithm will fail. Now to show you this doesn't work just with using light, we'll hop onto another world and here we are in a very different world. Now also again from the same principles you would not expect any slimes to spawn we are on the correct height to spawn them but we'll go and set this time to night. We'll just go to 1600 and we'll grab a potion for the meantime. So it's full night that fills the conditions of any hostile mob spawning. We are on hard, of course, and nothing spawns. And as you know, they should spawn very, very, very quickly if they were. So that also shows that these are blocking every spawn because of there are a entity in the block. Now they're just transparent blocks. Now you walk through them. They've got no collision masks and all that. But because of the algorithm, they cannot spawn inside of it. Now there's another load of things that happens with that as well. So things like pressure plates, trapdoors, any sort of solid bit. But the most important one for mob traps is string and pressure plates. So that if there's a pressure plate on the floor, if I had a world of pressure plates, nothing would spawn. Because that's not a legal block. Same way as if you had tripwires on the floor. So when you come to making big mob traps, if you have a complete wasteland of nothing, so no spawnable blocks and you make a mob farm you're looking at only the blocks inside that mob farm actually giving legal blocks to spawn things inside the farm itself so if that block was clear and your farm was that block let's say if you had that there and then this is your farm block this would be a legal one so that it would succeed in here and then from that it could then spawn it there if it picked this one, it couldn't spawn it there, it wouldn't fit the algorithm. So there's a very small chance of it actually being able to spawn in that one place inside the farm. Even though this block here isn't a spawning block, but it's a legal air block. So that's why people like to have air blocks around their farms, and so it doesn't obstruct things. But also, it kind of doesn't work too well because it would seem it's sort of an 8x8 area, of which if it picks a block, there's an 8x8 area of where it will then spawn the actual resulting mob. And then for certain mobs, things like normal 
um, zombies and all that. They can spawn in clusters, so you, if it says check this block here, this block succeeds, it might spawn a zombie there, there, and there, but it might not spawn it on this exact block because you can't get them all spawning in one exact place at the same time. It just doesn't happen. Um, so that is how it works. So when you're building your farms, when we say air blocks, it's that you're giving legal blocks to spawn on for the farm. So in that theory, if your farm, let's just say, got rid of these blocks here. So this hole in the ground represents your farm. So you may have pressure plates in here with pistons or something, pushing mobs into a hole. Just for instance, have a hole in there and be coming across through redstone. So this block here isn't a legal block to spawn on. That one would be an air block in there. And then any block around the farm would also be an air block. Now if you went ahead and blocked that one off, so let's grab a half stab and block. So we'll just say that we cover these ones off. These blocks are not spawnable blocks, not final spawnable blocks, but they are legal air blocks. So if the algorithm hits one of them, it can then spawn a mob here, but it can't spawn it underneath there as there's an actual collision box inside of it. So in that case, you can increase your mob blocks by having air blocks around your farms. And it's about an 8x8 eight eight radius from the spawning it would seem. So if you go further and further and further then if you get to say here any air box here would be detrimental to your farm itself because they will spawn them over here not over there. So that's basically the whole principle of how air blocks work to my understanding and if I can think of anything else I will add it into the comments but that's a pretty simplistic way of looking at how air blocks work. So that's why if you're building a farm you do not want to have tripwire on the floor if you've got no air blocks around, otherwise you won't get anything spawning in your farm at all, which is quite an annoying thing. So when you come to designing farms you need to really consider these things and that's what an air block basically is. It's a block which satisfies all the conditions of spawning apart from the collision box. So hopefully that's helped you doing some farms hopefully you understand how things work and to add to that if you ever want to make anything peaceful things like the nether if you are high up in the ceiling you can easily just put down things like this in the floor anything that blocks the legal spawning but doesn't actually block any entities so if you are just put roses down it works, you put tripper on the floor it will work if you just put rails down it will work as well they won't spawn on that but if you have any air blocks around, say this one here, that would be a normal spawning block, then they can then spawn on the rest of it. But as you're at the top of the nether, most of it is solid blocks, so that the likeliness of an air block being around your area is very low. So you can actually make some parts of your world peaceful just by using things like this. So there, hopefully you learnt some things, even you pro players, I hope you've learnt something. And anyway, I've been King Happy, and I'll see you next time.